Welcome to part three of the Intermediate Revit course, where we'll start looking at the five best places to source and find Revit families. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials, and resources, as well as four hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. All right, so now we're gonna have a play around with furniture. And there's a few ways to add furniture inside of Revit. And what we're going to be doing the first way is by using the Enscape Asset Library. And this is gonna come with a whole library of assets that you can add to your Revit file and that will render out really nicely inside of Enscape. So they'll work for all of your floor plans. They'll look good in all of your elevations and sections, but then they'll also render out really nicely instead of having you know weird textures on them or different materials when you just import something from uh, Revit City or BIM Object or something like that. All of the Enscape assets are meant for Enscape, so they're going to look really, really good. But we'll also be loading in some families from BIM Object as well, which is a manufacturer's website, I suppose. So this is a website with all of the manufacturer's product 3D models. If a product designer or manufacturer creates a table, they're going to put their 3D model on BIM Object and then you can download that and use an actual real life manufactured item and put that into your Revit model. So this goes really well with Revit because Revit is very much you're designing something for real life. Having real life products is going to make it uh, really seamless when it comes to documenting this project. We'll also be importing some things from Revit City, which is just a generic kind of anyone can post 3D models on there and you can find some cool furniture and trucks and cars and stuff like that. So we'll be importing some things from there. And then lastly, we're going to create our own parametric family because this is something a lot of people are really eager on doing and it's a great skill to have, especially when in a professional practice. So if we zoom into the floor plan, you can see where some of the rooms are, what some of the furniture in these rooms is going to be. For example, in the lounge room, you're going to have a lounge, you're going to have beds in the bedroom and baths in the bathroom and so forth. So we can start to place these in by looking at the reference images that we've got. So I'm going to bring up those photos that we had previously, and we can have a look at these and see where some of that furniture goes. Now, usually with a concept design like this or a construction document, you're not going to be showing any loose furniture. You're only really going to be showing fixed joinery or furniture. Things like this table, this couch, you wouldn't really show that in a document set, but in a sketch design, if you're showing this to a client, and you wanna show the spatial features of the room, then it might be worth showing in, you know, the table and the TV and the jukebox and this lounge as well. That's something to consider when you're adding in assets. You don't wanna go over the top if you're just doing a documentation set. You've always gotta think about who's reading this drawing and what do I need to include in this drawing for them to be able to read it clearly. Now, for the sake of this, I am going to add in that table and the lounge. So that is this space here. You can see that there was a TV in the corner if we bring this back over, you can see that. This is the TV in the corner here, and there's a door there. And you can see that there's a table in the middle around about here, and a couch that does an L coming around like this. It doesn't quite go to that back wall, it's about up to here. So what we're going to do is have a look in the Enscape Asset Library by going up to the top tab, looking for Enscape, and then going to Asset Library. Now this can take a little bit to load up. It's um, quite a big and vast library so it depending on your computer speed it might take a long time but it's still a lot quicker using this than having a look on say like BIM object or Revit City and then having to download that and then upload it to your document and import it this is just really easy to download it and add it straight to your project so I'm just going to type up lounge as you can see it's going to load these in one by one it can take some time that's why you really want to be specific with what you're searching for i'm starting to think that maybe looking for a couch is probably a better search term we'll have a look at some of these last ones but they look like they're all just lounge chairs which are all these single single ones which we don't need so i'm going to look for a couch i guess that's what they call it in america <laughs> there we go and we're going to have a look for an l shape if there's no l shape one then we'll have to import this in from another library. And it doesn't look like there is one. What we can also do is go over to the architecture tab and load in a component, place a component and load in a family. We can have a look in the actual Revit library and see if there are any um, lounges or couches that we might be able to use. So we can click on one of these and have a look at the previews. Doesn't look like there's anything there. We can have a look maybe under seating. You can see there's some sofas. 
Maybe that's another search term we can look for. I'm just gonna have a scroll through these and have a look if there's any couches, doesn't look like it. But while we're here, we can also have a look for some tables. There might be a rectangular one that we could have used for the lounge. So that's this one here. And whereas we might not get it perfect, we can get it pretty close to what it would look like. Again, it's not really something that um, is important in the design. We're just putting it there for spatial reasons. So I'm going to add in this rectangular table. You can see it's importing it from, I was using the 2019 library. And what I can do is hit space to rotate this. I'm just going to place that in the middle of the room and I'm going to hit escape twice. And if we want to have a quick look at this in a 3D view without having to load up Enscape, what you can do is go up to the top modify tab and you can see there's a selection box. Just press this or you can press BX. And this is going to bring up a 3D view and what we can do is bring out that selection box and have a look at what the room's looking like. But so there we go, you can see a quick 3D view of that table and it looks pretty good. Again, it's not perfect, it's not exactly what that is. We could reduce the height of this and in fact we can have a look under edit type and we can start to see that you can change the values of this. And if we look at our reference image, that looks like it's probably only about 400 millimeters tall. So I'm going to change that to 400, click apply, and that looks a bit better. So now I'm going to go back to my asset library and see if we can find a sofa and see if that comes up. Now you can see there's a lot more options for a sofa. So it's really just got to do with what you're searching up. And you can see there's one starting to show up. We could even type in L shape and see if that gives us anything. I'm just going to select one of these ones. I'm going to go to my ground floor view and you're going to have to press that one again. So you can see that this couch is pretty small. It's not quite long enough on this side, but it's a bit too long on one side as well. But we're going to place it in and see if we can change some of those parameters. Now you can see the table that we imported from the Revit library. It looks clean. It's just a square and there's perfect geometry, I guess you could say. Now the Enscape asset that we just imported, that looks a bit janky. <laughs> it's not exactly uh, what you'd like to see in a sketch design. However, if we were to render this out in Enscape, you would see that it looks really, really nice. You can see that's the couch there. So that looks pretty good compared to the actual reference image. Now, as you can see, Enscape is currently rendering out that 3D view in Revit, which has a selection box on it. Enscape recognizes that there's a selection box and it allows you to do these cool 3D cutout perspectives which is a really, really handy tool to do some really nice renders and some really cool things that you usually wouldn't be able to do just inside of Revit. And it's also giving you like construction information of the walls. You can see there's an internal brick layer and then there's a air barrier or a gap there. And then you've got a masonry wall here, block wall. But it's also a really nice way to do some of these um, cool uh, construction 3D sections. And that's where it comes down to that if you're modeling up the model using the correct procedures where you're creating all the correct wall types and floor types, then by the time you get to the rendering stage and the presentation stage, all of that looks really, really good if you're following the right procedure. Lastly, what I want to touch on is that we're going to move this around, but we're also going to come back to this render later because we're going to do an actual internal render of this space to try and get an image that looks photorealistic like this. So this is going to be one of our views and we're going to be setting up 3D views in a little bit later, but let's continue to go on with adding furniture around. To turn off this selection box, all you have to do is come down to the properties uh, panel to the side here and tick on selection box and untick that. There you can see we're back to being normal. What we're going to do is just move this table over a bit. In fact, I'm going to change the dimensions of this. We're going to make it not as long we're going to make this table, let's say 1200 long. And you can see that shortens that table. We can line it up with about there. And then I'm going to bring both of these over to about there. Okay, so now let's say we wanted to add in this corner TV. We could go to the Enscape Asset Library and find a TV, which would be pretty easy. Or if we wanted to find the exact TV that we want to find, we can go to BIM Object and have a look for it. Now BIM Object has a plugin for Revit. So you can download the BIM object plugin and you can install it into Revit and you will have a tab up the top like Enscape, which is extremely super helpful. Otherwise you can come to the BIM object website and you can search for products and you can find what you're looking for. So you can already start to see that there are, you know, toilets, fridges, sofas, 
that's a nice sofa that we could have used there. But let's have a look for TV. And you can see that there are 440 product families and there are a bunch of different TVs that we can install and download into our Revit file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that we've got an Samsung 65 inch flat screen, which I highly doubt we had that nice of a TV back then. But we can download this and you can see that there were only PDFs for this. Um, most of these come with Revit files or Revit families and they usually also come with Archicad uh, families or models whatever you call them in Archicad. Again you can see that there's only an Archicad and SketchUp so sometimes what you might need to do then is not actually use an actual product. You might have to then go on to Revit City if there's nothing in Enscape. If there's nothing in the Revit library you can go to Revit City and download an actual TV that someone has made. BIM object is really good for finding actual products but Sometimes you can't find what you're looking for on there and it's better off just finding a generic model because it doesn't really matter in the end. Now obviously if you're trying to specify what fridge is going to be used in the design, you want to find the actual fridge that's being used and install that Revit file and upload it into your model. For example, let's say that we had this exact AEG fridge for our kitchen. If I download this, you can see that there are a bunch of different files that you can use to install or download and you can see that there's a Revit family, a .rfa file type. So if we download this and save it, we can then go to architecture, place a component and load in a family and we can find where we've placed that fridge and we can place it in. Now this was for level two up in the kitchen. So what we can do is then place this in and we can move this around later, but I wanna see what this looks like first. I'm gonna hit escape, go to our 3D view and it's kind of difficult to see here. So what we, we can do is select that selection box and there we go we've got our fridge we can bring this out a bit if we want to have a look at the surrounding context and what's important about this is that it's going to have all of the product data and the technical information inbuilt into this model so that we don't have to do any of that when we're specifying it you can see it's got all the correct materials and it's going to import all those materials into your file as well it's a really quick and seamless way to add in product data and products from actual manufacturers. So definitely consider doing that if you need to specify products. But for us, for this TV, we just need something generic. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Revit City and then find an actual TV that is just generic. And I'm going to upload that into my Revit file. Revit City is just one of many different sites where you can download Revit families. But as you can see, there is a flat screen TV television. It's not got any product information on it. It's just a generic TV and we can download this and you can see that there are different options and these are parametric options, I believe. You can download the one file and it will have these options embedded inside of that model. So I'm gonna hit download now. All right, so now I'm going to go to architecture and place a component, load in a family, project files, flat screen television, now this TV is wall mounted, so it's not exactly what we're looking for, but you can see that it's a wall based family so that you have to place it on a wall. And if we place this in, I just want to show you how this works. I'm going to select that TV and you can see that's currently a 55 inch TV, but if we select from the drop down, you can change this. So the, our TV is much smaller and you can drag that over and you can change it using this drop down menu. If we have a look in 3D, and click on the selection box because we've got that selected. You can see what that looks like. And obviously you want to change the elevation of this. So I'm just gonna make it 200 so it's not sitting on the floor. And so that might actually work for say this TV on the wall here, although it is not wall mounted, we might want to do that. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as four hours of ad free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.